Hi, I'm Dr. Tatish Karazi, and I really want to talk to you about the importance of brain health. If you have depression, if you have fatigue, if you have um, loss of focus and concentration and can't remember people's names, these all indicate that you may have poor brain health. Brain degeneration is a serious problem, but no one's really addressing it. Many patients are left really out in the cold when their, their brain is not working well, and the healthcare system really doesn't address these, these issues until uh, someone develops end-stage neurological disease. Now, one of the most common things that happens when the brain starts to degenerate is people get really, really tired and they get fatigued, but their fatigue is really based on stimulation. So whenever we see a patient with chronic fatigue, one of the first questions <clears throat> that we clinically want to ask, is their fatigue metabolic and nutritional and dietary and hormonal based, or is their fatigue brain based? Brain based fatigue is often overlooked. And the key difference between brain based fatigue and metabolic fatigue is that with brain based fatigue, you get tired after you use your brain. So you get tired after you um, work on the computer. You get really fatigued if you drive for a long period of time. You get really fatigued when you try to read. You get really fatigued when you <clears throat> are engaged in deep conversation with some friends. <clears throat> These are all signs that the brain itself doesn't have endurance, that the brain itself is aging, that the brain itself is degenerating, that it's failing. When you take those symptoms and you combine that with <clears throat> constant brain fog and then depression, these are all red flags that your brain may need some help, that your brain is in trouble. Now, unfortunately, if you have early signs of neurodegeneration and you walk into the conventional healthcare model, you're gonna have a normal examination, your MRIs will be normal, and you'll basically be told that you're aging. If you have a degenerating brain and your brain is starting to fail on you, and you go and see alternative healthcare professionals, they're likely not to take it seriously. They're likely to look at other types of factors that may not address brain issues and, and blame your fatigue on things like adrenal problems or, or thyroid problems, which may really not be the, the key focus. What we often see in our clinical practice is that when individuals actually have brain degeneration or brain impairment, um, it's the last thing that practitioners look at. And for the most part, when you look at training of um, alternative medicine practitioners like naturopaths or chiropractors or acupuncturists or even medical physicians, none of us are really trained in looking for and identifying early signs of neurodegeneration. None of us are really taught how to improve brain function, brain health. So what that leaves the average person with is they have nowhere to go. So when they see that their brain is failing them and they can't remember uh, things that they've learned in the past, it's hard for them to learn new things, they have difficulty with directions, they're really worried about how they're gonna complete their tasks and their work, and um, they have this chronic depression that no one's really helping them with, they're really frustrated because, first of all, people don't believe them. People dismiss them as that they're getting older or have aging. And it actually ends up being where you, the patient, have to become empowered. It's one of those conditions where you're really on your own, that you really have to figure out the strategies to, to improve your brain function. One of the things that I've recently put together is this um, foundations for brain health, foundational steps of brain health, called the one-to-one -one series with Dr. K. What I've tried to do with this is I've tried to actually pretend that you are a patient in my office and I'm giving you the forms I use and going through the steps it takes to really improve brain health. And here's the interesting thing about brain health. You can't just use everything to treat it. There are certain fundamental, foundational, clinical steps that have the biggest impact on changing brain. So we go through each of these steps each week through our program. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to have you recognize your own symptoms teach you how to change those symptoms, and then monitor your brain health. So in this one-to-one -one program, we have a brain function assessment form we, where we teach you how to identify symptoms of brain degeneration in certain areas. We have a self-neurological examination form. We teach you how to do your own neurological examination. We then combine these two forms together so you can get a general idea of what areas of your own brain may not be working properly. And then what we'll then do is we'll then go into nutritional lifestyle factors that can be impact why you have some of those uh, declines in brain function. And then we'll teach you exercises and things to do to activate your brain. We'll talk about dietary and nutritional fundamental steps to make a big difference in, in how your brain functions. Typically, brain degeneration and lack of brain function is not caused by a single nutrient deficiency. It's not caused by, uh, and it's not corrected by just taking a isolated supplement. Uh, what you really have to understand about improving your brain function is to first identify what part of your brain is degenerating. Are you having problems with focus and concentration? Are you having problems with balance? Are you having problems with directions? Are you having problems with recognizing people's faces? 
these are all specific symptoms that are associated with areas of the brain specifically, and you can find out ways to activate them, to rehabilitate them, uh, to make a difference for them. Furthermore, when you look at how we approach brain, many times we're you know, taught to just give everyone amino acids or general protocols for memory or this botanical for this symptom and this botanical for that symptom, but those are really all uh, models that are quite honestly ineffective. When you look at brain function, <clears throat> the key thing is the brain needs certain metabolic nutrients mechanisms to function properly. The brain needs glucose, the brain needs oxygen, the brain can't be inflamed, the brain must have a healthy blood brain barrier. These are all key components to our program and what we'll do in this one-to-one -one series, we'll walk you through each one of these steps so then you can take control of your health, control of your uh, the future of your brain and then uh, have applications that you can monitor your progress throughout time. So let me give you a summary week by week by how we've organized the program. So week one is really all about having you understand how your brain works, um, for you to understand what areas of your brain may be degenerating, right? We want you to understand the concept of brain endurance. We want you to understand the concept of neuroplasticity, neurodegeneration. It's critical that you understand the difference between neuroplasticity and neurodegeneration when you're faced with trying to improve your brain health. Week two, we'll start to get, in, we'll start to get into more detailed evaluation of what areas of your brain you, you need to rehab, how you can rehab your brain, how you can do things to increase connections with neurons together, how you can slow down the neurogenerative process, and then how to monitor yourself. And this week, we'll give you the uh, brain function assessment form. The form will break down each of the symptoms of each lobe of the brain and as they degenerate, and then we'll give you some exercise to do for each one of those areas. We'll give you your own self <coughs> neurological examination form so you can do your own examination for yourself and then use it as a baseline to compare how you're doing. We'll talk about the importance of uh, metabolic factors that increase your potential for plasticity when you try to do things like brain exercises or even physical exercises and how different types of exercise intensities have a different impact on brain function and brain plasticity. And then as we get into week three, we're gonna start diving into metabolic or nutritional factors that have a huge impact on brain function. And it's critical for us that we take certain steps in order because we know that as we take the most common mechanisms that have the, the greatest effects on brain chemistry and brain health, if we address those first, we really get rid of a lot of the smoke screen and we have <clears throat> uh, much more efficient, effective outcomes uh, with, our, with our protocols. So in week three, we're gonna start with what's called the Brain Health Nutrition Assessment Form. And we'll look at the major symptoms that impact brain function and brain health. And then we'll start into getting to the, one of the most common things, which is uh, looking at mechanisms of blood sugar fluctuations, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, uh, fluctuating blood sugar levels, what that does to brain health, and then how to manage those conditions so you can improve fuel delivery to your, to your brain. Week four, we go into some of the major deal breakers that impact the potential to develop plasticity and some of the key things you need to get in order for you to improve your brain function. We'll talk about the relationship between <clears throat> brain and stress and stress and brain. We'll talk about cortisol, melatonin rhythms, how they impact your sleep, how sleep impacts your brain function, what things you can do to improve your sleep. We, and then we'll also get into circulation and oxygen mechanisms for brain. Your brain must have oxygen to, to function effectively. We'll talk about how circulation plays a key role in that. We'll talk about how blood pressure and perfusion plays a key role in that. And then we'll talk about um, things like anemias that can be a deal breaker if you're trying to improve your brain function. Week five, we go a little bit deeper into this whole metabolic cascade of things and we start to get into what's called the brain gut access and the gut brain access. We'll talk about how um, your brain can actually impact your digestive function. We can also talk, we'll, we'll also be talking about how your digestive function impacts the brain. And we'll talk about how many times people get in this vicious cycle of having their brain impairment impact their digestion and how their digestion can impact their brain impairment. And we'll talk about clinical strategies that you can use to um, unwind this vicious cycle. We'll then also get into some discussions about some of the most inflammatory proteins like wheat and how these things cause neuroinflammation. We'll talk about how certain foods can cross-react with the brain. We want you to make a list of those things uh, throughout the program. We want to make sure you learn how to identify them and how to remove them from your protocol. And then finally in week six, we'll start talking about neuroinflammation, the brain immune access, the, certain, the importance of certain fats in your diet, uh, which fats are good, which fats are bad, how to improve your brain function from, a, from the perspective of an inflammatory and nutrient-based model of, of health. And then as we take each week, 
week um, one by one as we go through the whole process, as you see your outcomes each week, you can see which of these factors had the greatest impact on your brain health. This program is based in such a way where there are certain foundational physiological mechanisms that have an impact on how your brain functions and the key mechanisms that you need to understand to develop plasticity and to slow down neurodegeneration. It's not a program about taking isolated single nutrients to try to treat each symptom. It's about trying to understand that your brain needs certain things. Your brain needs stimulation in a specific way. Your brain needs oxygen. Your brain needs glucose. Your brain cannot be inflamed. Your brain has to have a healthy blood brain beer. So as we go through the program, we're, we're trying to really make sure that you understand those concepts and more importantly, you know how to implement those concepts for yourself. One of the most common requests we've had from readers of my brain book, Why Isn't My Brain Working, is a guided path. They, they need, they, there's a request for direction. Where do they start? What do they, what do they do next? So as you get involved with this one-to-one -one program, you'll get a workbook, and the workbook comes with accompanying videos and forms to fill out. We'll go through each of these forms in the workbook and in video piece by piece each week, and we'll have certain goals, certain objectives, certain exercises for you to do each week to help guide your way through the key concepts we talked about in my book, Why Isn't My Brain Working, and to get you the key foundational steps that you need to improve your brain health. I'm really looking forward to share this one-to-one -one program with you. We put a lot of time and energy into it. We're really hoping that we'll, we'll really help you on your journey to improve brain health. Please join us at drknews.com for educational information related to these topics. And if you're interested in this program, please click on the link below. See you there.